Now I'm going to go ahead and go to Customize Unit Setup. And I'm going to change my units to US Standard. You can also change them to Metric uh, or Custom Units if you like. I'm going to change mine to Feet with Fractional Inches to uh, 1 32nd of an inch. Now if you'd like to, you can use a different type of measurement, but just keep in mind that the values that I put in won't necessarily match yours. If you do that, you have to do a little bit of conversion there, obviously. So we'll say OK to that. And now I want to go to the Grid and Snaps toggle here. So I'll right click on this little Snaps toggle and bring that up. Under Snaps, I'm going to choose Grid Points because I want to be able to snap to those grid points, make things nice and straight. Under the Home Grid tab, I'm going to change my grid spacing to about 6 inches or so. Okay, so that means I can snap every six inches. I'll keep things nice and rounded here. Go ahead and close that out. And uh, and well, another thing I want to you know, make you aware of is we're going to be using these uh, transform type ins down here just to view our measurements. So you can see as I move the arrow around, you can see how those values are changing. And we're going to be working in our top view. So the only measurements that we're going to be looking at are the X and the Y. So you can see that right here at the origin, I've got basically zero. And then as we move over, you can see how that those measurements change. So these are going to be useful for us in drawing out our wall segments. So we'll keep those uh, keep those in mind as we go. Now there are many different ways here in 3ds Max to actually create walls. You could use splines, you could use planes, boxes, uh, multitude of different techniques to uh, to build those walls up. The one that we're going to be looking at here is uh, something that's actually a wall primitive. So let's look at how we can do that. So we'll go to the Create panel. And I've just moved the origin kind of to the upper upper uh, left side there so that we have room here. And uh, so I'm going to go to the Create panel. And instead of standard primitives, let's go ahead and open that. And we'll choose AEC Extended. And this gives us three different object types, foliage, railing, and walls. And we're going to be looking at these a little bit later. So let's go ahead and choose the wall. Now under the parameters rollout, you'll see the width. We can change that. Right now it's set to 5 inches. And the height is set to 8 feet. So that's nice. We don't have to worry about the width of the walls. We don't have to worry about the height of the walls. They're going to be uh, uniform across our entire structure. Okay. The justification is going to tell you, you know, if you drag a line from here to here, let's say, the justification will uh, let you choose whether you want the wall to be on the basically the outside of that line or the inside or uh, centered on that. So kind of similar to if you're doing a kind of a stroke in Photoshop or something. The uh, So you can choose whether your outline is going to define the outer edge of that wall or the inner edge of the wall, or if it's right in the middle. And let's just, I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine on uh, center justification. And now to actually draw this out, let's go ahead and activate snaps. You can hit S as well to do that. You can see it brings up the little blue blocks and I can snap to here. You can see in increments of six inches. Okay, so to place our walls, we're gonna simply click twice. So once at the beginning and once at the end. And the click at the end will actually signify the start of the next segment and we'll see how that all combines together but let's go ahead and start and we'll just start at zero 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 all the way across uh, to create a click and then I'll just drag this across and let's say we want this wall to be about 26 and a half feet so I'm going to go ahead and in the X you can see the value there drag that out to about 26 six inches and you can see the eva value in the Y is not changed so that tells me I've got a completely straight wall segment here so I'll go ahead and click that now if I drag again, uh, I'm not holding down any buttons, I've just clicked at the end point, and this brings up a new segment here. So now I'm going to make sure that my X stays at 26 and a half, and I'm going to make sure my Y goes to about minus 4 and a half, okay? And we'll make a little alcove here. So we've got 26 and a half in the X, 4 and a half in the Y. Go ahead and click there. You can see, we'll look at this more a little bit later, but you can see how it's cleaning up those corners as we go as well. So let's create this little alcove. Let's make this about five and a half feet. So we'll bring this out to uh, about 32 feet and make sure the Y stays at four and a half feet. Go ahead and click on that. And this one, the segment will make about 10 feet. So we'll bring that to about minus 14 feet, six inches. Make sure the X stays at 32. Okay, bring this over to 26 and a half, back to where we were, and 14, six. Go ahead and click on that. Let's go ahead and bring this down and we'll make this the end of the wall down here at about 32 feet. So we've got 26, 6 by about 32. Go ahead and click that. And now let's go ahead and bring this all the way over. And this time we're going to be going past the origin, okay, and actually off the viewport. Now if you're going to be dragging this off the viewport, one way to reframe this without exiting your tool is to actually go ahead and hit I. 
and that'll go ahead and bring this back. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go uh, past the the origin by about 10 and a half feet. So I'm going to go minus 10 and a half and remain at 32 in the Y. Okay, and now I'll start to head back up this direction. Now I want to go back to make make sure that uh, the X stays at minus 10 and a half, and the Y I want to change to about 21 uh, 21 feet 6 inches. Okay, feel free to mess around with the uh, the values that you've got. If you want to make something that's unique, go ahead and do that. That's fine. These are just the values that I'm going to be using. Now I want to create this little uh, alcove for the stairway. And so I'm going to come back in this direction. Make sure my Y stays at 21.6 and I'll just go back to zero. Okay. And now I'll head up and this is the last segment that we'll be using. So I'll go ahead and hit I. And now I can just drag this up and you can see I'm back at the origin. And if I click on this now, you can see that since I've clicked on that initial point, it's going to ask me, do I want to weld that point? Do I want to connect it together? Yes, I do. Okay. And now I can use exits by right clicking. All right. We'll go ahead and turn off our snaps. And now what we should have, if we go into our perspective, is a wall here. And you can see that this is you know, eight feet high. The walls are five inches thick. And they're following along with the lines that we created here. All right, I can turn off, by hitting J, I can turn off that selection bracket, hit F4 to go to edged faces. And you can see how those edges, or those in intersections, are really cleaned up. Okay, we didn't go in and select polygons and extrude or anything like that. We actually just dragged those lines across. And as we created those new segments, those uh, intersections were really cleaned up nicely. 3ds max so this gives us kind of a nice framework here you can put a kind of a door and window here maybe maybe a window here have this be kind of the, the focal point of the front of our room here and then maybe some stairs back here and a door uh, we can do a lot of interesting things with this but uh, that's just one of the ways that we can create walls here in 3ds max is using the AEC extended wall primitive and it also offers some other advantages as far as working with the door and window primitives that also kind of come along with that so let's begin to look at some of the ways that we can use those in the next lesson. We'll start by adding some windows to our walls.